the channel um, today I'm gonna dive into a project I've been wanting to do with this for a long time and that is trying to put a KTM front end on this I mean obviously these didn't come with headlights I have the light bars and stuff which are cool but you're just never gonna get as good as a headlight with just cheap light bars so today I'm gonna dive into this project and see what all it takes to mount a KTM fender and a KTM headlight so I'll probably switch over to some time-lapse stuff and get into this project. And it's pretty simple too. It's just a single eight millimeter bolt there to pull off the number plate. And there's four 10 millimeter bolts down there. I got this mocked up. So what I ended up doing is I just drilled two new holes, did some measurements, you know, found out where I needed to do it to mount it straight between the two fork tubes and all that, and to get it so that way the fender mounts flush up against the triple tree because that also helps hold it straight. So I'm only gonna use two bolts and this thing does not move, it doesn't go anywhere, so that's cool. So, yep, just pop the two new holes in there so now I'm going to try to get this fitted and see what I have to do to mount it because they come with, oh, uh, they're down in there, but they're little, they're little elastic straps and they mount, like you wrap them around the fork tubes and then it holds the headlight to the fork tubes. I don't think I'm gonna be able to use those, we'll see, but I'm gonna jump into All that right, now. So I put it up to this. I might actually be able to use the rubber straps, we'll see, but so you have these two little these two little things sticking up on each side and that is what is supposed to these are supposed to go into those but i'm assuming just because this is china crap that the width of those is slightly too wide like i can force it down in there but it'll slowly pick itself up and out of there so i drilled holes through those pins because they were hollow all the way up until the top and i'm putting a zip tie down through it so this end will be poking out down through the bottom of the fender there, and I'll use the head of another zip tie to hold that down. I'll show you when I'm done what I'm talking about, but that should work out pretty good. All right, so I got the headlight mounted. I was going to do some fancy stuff with a zip tie, but I can't even see it. it. It actually doesn't look bad just looping the zip tie to itself. Um... I don't mind being able to see that what little you can. I was gonna do it the other way because you wouldn't have been able to see any zip tie, but it is what it is. I think it looks pretty sick. It's gonna look sick when I do all the plastics black too, but now I gotta try to mount this. I'm gonna try to use the rubber bungees it comes with, but if not, I'll make some sort of bracket probably to mounted up top too all right so i got the headlight fully mounted now um i was unable to use the rubber bungee that it comes with but what i did do is can i even show it so i stuffed a zip tie down through the triple tree like behind where the bolt is um and then i looped it to itself around the headlight there and just tighten it both sides. And this thing is solid, like it doesn't, honestly, that's more solid than the rubber bungees because I've used those on other bikes before. So figured I wouldn't over-engineer it and make some sort of bracket if I didn't need to because it just works. So yeah, after I wire the headlight up to a little LiPo battery, which is what I usually use, it's a little RC battery. Um, after that, it'll be a good functioning headlight on a bike that doesn't normally come with one. And these are sick, but they're just not as bright as a normal headlight, so. Right, boys, well, it's been a few days, and I figure before I end this video off, I'm gonna install the rest of these black plastics that I just got in. So uh, I'm gonna cut into that now. And there she is with all the black plastics. 
I think this thing looks sick. And it really, the lines really flow too with like that fender. I was hoping it wasn't gonna look weird, but I don't know, it looks sick. I got my new tires on too. These are the, the Tusk. They're like, they're variant of a Enduro-ish tire. It's a soft intermediate tire. So it should do really good in like this, in the loom stuff, which is pretty much what I ride. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping those work out nicely. And I put on some bigger pegs too. I forgot exactly which ones. I'll throw them on the screen, but uh, they were pretty cheap. Only a little bit more than the cheap aluminum ones that I've seen snap. So I didn't want to go with that cheapy stuff. So I ended up going with these steel ones and they're like almost twice the width of the factory peg. And I think they were like sub $40, I think. So it's a really good option for, for a nice enduro peg. But uh, yeah, now I'm going to install some bar risers because that's one of the next things I've been wanting to do because my problem is I, I don't like really wide bars and the taller the bar is, usually the wider the bar is as well. So to get the width that I like, I usually have to put a spacer as well to get the height and the width that I like. So I'm gonna install that now and see how I like it. Well, I got the bar risers in. You can see them right there. All tight, everything's even. And I gotta say, it definitely fits me better. I knew it would. Again, I usually do tall bars, just makes it easier for me to ride with my condition and everything. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked on how this came out. And I don't, we'll see if I, I might include it in this video, but this is usually what I wire my lights up to. This one's just a 2S, but uh, 3S is ideal because it's like 11.1 volts, I think. Something like that, so it's slightly brighter. But I'm either going to put a bar bag here, like I, I'm pretty sure I said in the video, or I'm thinking about making a battery tray, and I can bolt it right there to that little tab that sticks off the triple tree, and it'll just hold the battery right there. So we'll see. I'm not sure what I want to do yet, but um, yeah, as far as a little Enduro build, I think this thing's coming out sick. From what I've seen, there's only one other KX on YouTube, 100 at least, that has a headlight. And in my opinion, the guy didn't use a very good looking headlight. So this is a sick option. It's a cheap option. So uh, yeah. All right, so today's a new day and I ended up getting the rest of the stuff in to wire this headlight up properly. So I'm gonna briefly explain like, like how I'm wiring it. I'll throw a, um, a wiring diagram picture up either now or at the end of the video or something that you can screenshot. But anyway, um, these are just some cheap Amazon switches. I'll throw a picture of them on the screen right now. And they're just a two wire system, nothing crazy, super easy. Um, so basically this black and white wire is the wire that is for the headlight itself. So the white one is power, black is ground. So what I'm going to do here is the white one will get wired to the positive on, because this is the piece that plugs into the battery, and this is positive. This is obviously the negative, it's black, but I'm, I'm running an inline fuse on the negative side. That's just how I do it. Um, so yeah, this red wire will get soldered to this white wire, because that's the power for the headlight, and then this black wire will get wired to one of these two on the switch, and the other one on the switch will go to this end of the ground. So basically when the switch is off, you're breaking the connection for the ground. And then when you flip it on, you're, you're completing the ground and the light will come on. Again, I'll put a wiring diagram on the screen. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get into soldering all this stuff now. Yep, so I'm no professional, but that's what I like to do. I'll put it a little bit below the wire like that, and I'll just keep feeding it. Like, I'll, I'll put the soldering iron underneath the wires. It'll heat them up, and then I'll just keep pushing this around till it, like, creates a puddle. Of course, now it doesn't want to do it. But, yeah, it'll create, like, a puddle on the soldering iron, and you can, like, spread it around on the on the wires themselves, which that's pretty good. It looks pretty good now. And what I like to do is I'll give these a good, pretty good yank. And if they don't move, I 
I call that good. Um, any of these little stragglers I'll wrap around. And most importantly, um, I put heat shrink on the wire before I soldered it. I do it all the time where I forget to put the heat shrink on, then you gotta break it. So yeah, now that I soldered them together, you just slide the heat shrink up on the connection. I'll heat this with my torch or something, it'll shrink it down, and it's a good watertight, safe connection. So I'm gonna do that to these ones as well. I gotta shorten this one because it's so much longer on the ground side of this, because of this chunk I had to add in. So I'll probably shorten a part of this and I'll shorten this wire too, just so it isn't so much longer on this side. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times, because using wire strippers are kind of a pain for me, so what I like to do is I'll take these and be very gentle, just barely squeeze the wire with this. Like you'll pinch it on one side, flip it a little bit, get the portion of it you didn't get any squeezing on. Squeeze it just gentle. And then there you go. So basically you squeeze, rotate the wire 90 degrees, squeeze, pull it off and it comes right off without using wire strippers. So now I'll twist this wire just so it's nice and, nice and compact and doesn't try to fray on me. So now that that is nice and wrapped, I'll come over here and basically all I'm gonna do is wrap this wire around this one. I know this is way bigger of a diameter, I'm not a fan either, but I couldn't find an inline fuse that was the same gauge wire as this, so it is what it is, it'll work. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna wrap this around here and then solder it. So now I'm gonna solder the two wires together. Of course, now it's trying to move. Of course it moves. Uh. So I got all this wired, so now I'm, well, I suppose I'll show you. Put the little switch, and it works. Sweet, put it in a nice tucked away location so it doesn't get taken out being up here because the bike hits the ground. So <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna wrap all this up, make it a nice little wiring harness and figure out what I wanna do to mount my battery. And for anybody wondering or worrying that this battery isn't going to last a long time, um, I actually did a test. I plugged in this exact same battery to a 12 inch dual row light bar. And I checked the voltage of the battery before and after a three hour runtime. And after I unplugged the light bar and checked the voltage of this battery, it didn't even drop a point of a volt. So these batteries last a long time. So to power a couple small LEDs, this thing should last realistically a couple days. So we're going to do some tests on this anyway, just, just so I can show you. Maybe that'll be one of the next videos. I'll go out and do a night ride and stuff. But um, yeah, no. If you get a big milliamp hour battery, which is the MAH, it says on the battery. Like this one's a, this one's a 5200 MAH. So that's just the capacity or whatever. So as long as you get a big capacity battery like that, they're not an issue. They last a long time. So uh, yeah, hopefully my 3S will be in soon because I ordered a 3S instead of this 2S. So it'll be slightly brighter. And then we'll go out and do a test and see how long this thing lasts. See if it can do any of my local trails without any issues, which I know it will have no issues, but you know, just to prove it to you guys. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I hope this helps somebody out because this is... Instead of trying to ghetto rig some sort of stator, this is the best way to do this without messing with any of the factory wiring or anything. So super pumped on how it came out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And until next time. Well, I figured before I ended this video off, I'd show you how bright this light is. Anywho, it's a little bit brighter on camera than it is in person, but it's, it's pretty close to what it looks like on this camera, so. And that's only with 7.1 volts, let alone the almost 12 volts to 3S LiPo will be. So this is definitely going to be a way better option than the light bars because the light bars were definitely not that bright and they didn't have as much spread. The problem with the little mini light bars is they only shoot far. They don't have any spread. So it's like pretty much using one of those telescoping um, flashlights where you can make it wide or narrow, pretty much just make it full narrow. And that's what the little light bars were like. 
but this one is definitely enough throw and ambient lighting, which is six. Pause the screenshot, but this is the headlight I got. And I made sure to get the brighter option. These are the switches. I could only buy them in a pack of three. And I used these, but I just cut off the white plug. Um, any inline fuse will do, really. And this is the 3S battery I was talking about. Just cheap bar risers, but work good. These are the tires I got. This is the rear one. This is the front, and speaking from the future, they're fantastic. This is the front fender. It's from a 2018 KTM 85. And finally, here's the pegs, which are one of my favorite upgrades.